It's crazy. <laughs> oh my god. Wow. I wasn't aware there were rockets. Rockets here, so. Yeah, it should, should be a fun day. Should be yeah. A fun day. Apparently there were some Russians in, in Normandy and this is the statue to celebrate the French and the Russian air forces together, which is very confusing. I have no idea. <laughs> Apparently this... there were. <laughs> bottom is uh, you you didn't live for long but you live intense <laughs> you live intense. intense yeah It's ridiculously huge. Like there's just so much here. All the space aircrafts and everything. Satellites. And we got the uh, the nuke here and another nuke down there. <laughs> Gotta love the French and their nuclear weapons. So there's an interesting story about the, the Soyuz, the, the capsule and the toy. Basically they have this little toy suspended on a, on a rope or something. And when they exit the Earth's gravity, the toy starts, starts floating, and that's how they know they exited the gravity. And it's a real thing. You can find it on, on the videos of astronauts actually getting into space, and there's this little toy, so it's very interesting. <laughs> Kretien. Yeah, to me, it means jerk in Serbian, <laughs> like Kreten. So basically, one of the Salyut missions, mm -hmm. uh, they lost control of the space station, and it was the first time that space station was sort of revived in space. They sent a mission that connected to the station and started all systems back, and the station started functioning. That was the space. Now it's time for the uh, period between uh, World War One and World War Two. Gazelle. Yeah. Uh, it was actually built in Yugoslavia under the license from the French, and it's one of the most popular helicopters in, in Serbian Air Force today. Wow, even today? Yeah, it, it flies to this day. So, Sikorsky? Yeah, Sikorsky. Is Sikorsky an American guy? No, he, he's actually a Russian guy. And, yeah. And he emigrated to the US, I think, after the revolution in Russia in 1918. Okay. After that, he emigrated to the US and became one of the most popular, you know, US helicopter manufacturers. Wow, what the heck is this? Oh my god, it's a hall of prototypes. You gotta love it, it's in a museum and it's probably been here for decades and it's still dripping oil. It's super nerdy but you can actually touch the, the landing gear of the Mirage. That's awesome. And it's so oily still. Like, wow. I definitely lubed it up before they sent it out. <laughs> That's what she said. <laughs> I just got in, in trouble for trying to 3D scan this aircraft behind me for the, uh, for the channel. And I don't want to get kicked out. So maybe that's it for sneaking into uh, exhibits to try and steal it for the 3D models. Oh, I'm gonna crash. <laughs> there we go. It's the uh, vertical takeoff and landing, the French version. That's quite cool. It's the actual sort of prototypes that they were working on. Yeah.
Quick side note, it looks like the French have built their own version of this uh, crazy Nazi coal power plane, except this one's just a Delta Wing experimental aircraft. This is a very ugly jet. So this jet is still in the use in the Polish Air Force, yet it was designed for East Germany. So Hoi Su-22M. That's from the 60s and they still use it today. Let's uh, go on board our Concorde flight. We're going That's to cool. New York. Yeah. We've got to be there in three hours. Should be pretty fast. And for some reason, we're entering through the rear of the plane this time. It's a VIP entrance. Ah, absolutely. Private jet. Private jet, let's go. It's small. I didn't realize how narrow it was. So the reason there's no seats is because this was the prototype version. And so you've got all the machinery here to record all the optics and the control panels as we make our way to the cockpit. Wow, that's a lot of controls. Something that we just realized is that when people came on the Concorde, like they're traveling to New York, they had to duck to get onto because it's just so low. Oh my gosh. The legroom is actually fine. But I was surprised how small the windows are. Yeah. <laughs> Who did the, the better 3D? Found and explained or the, uh, the here at the Aerospace they Museum? They stole our mountains. They stole yeah. our mountains, yeah. our background. So it makes me mad. We just finished looking at the Concords because Virgin wanted to buy the Concords from British Airways, like Richard Branson for, he, he offered, I think up to a hundred thousand pounds, which doesn't seem like a lot, but considering British Airways didn't pay anything for the Concords, I think it's pretty fair. And they said, no, like he was willing to keep them flying and have them in the air. Like they just killed it off, you know? Yeah, and it's did. just such a shame. I'm wondering if, if some aeroplanes at some point revives the mm. Concorde program just for fun. He wants a Concorde. <laughs> so that leads me to my second point that I've always been a big believer, and I haven't done this yet on a video, but if Iran revolution had not happened, they were going to buy two or three Concords, maybe more, to fly from Tehran to New York, supersonic, right? And I reckon that would have been the thing that would have made the Concorde program much more feasible and then would have been like the domino to get Qantas to buy, American Airlines, Pan Am. And then we would have had so many Concords in so many hands that they would have never have gone extinct. Yeah, that would be fun. That's my theory. That's my theory. <laughs> It's got canards with flaps. I've never seen that before. So I've just found out <laughs> that uh, a good friend here has never been on a wide body plane and we're just about to go check out a Boeing 7 747 yeah, yeah. for the and first the time. And the A380, if we can enter that, that would be really cool. And the A380, yeah. that would be very cool. <laughs> they won't let me fly this plane in real life, but I can fly it on War Thunder. The Focke Wolf, and it's still leaking oil to this day. This is a very sexy plane. Time to get on board his first wide body and let's just uh, See what he thinks. It's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> so much 
space, obviously. <laughs> it's very weird. I'm not used to this. The most modern 747 that we have today would be the Lufthansa 747-8. We're taking off. We have arrived in New York and now we're flying back to France on the 747. That was your first wild body plane. What did you think? Yeah, very nice flight. We arrived in like 10 minutes. 10 so minutes. Perfect, perfect. Easy. Really. And now we're here back in Paris. Yeah. And is... yeah, it's time F to go for lunch. Faster than Concorde, yeah. Faster than a Concorde, surprisingly. <laughs> this is the greatest jet ever made, I think. The 7 Yeah, it's legendary, legendary. It's legendary. It's, uh, it's legendary. Uh, but it's a shame that Boeing has kind of slipped, in my opinion, since the people that built that are no longer there, in my yeah. opinion.